Welcome in this series of videos in which we are going to demonstrate how to configure eVPN-based VXLAN with IMC, HPE, Intelligent Management Framework. IMC provides a very useful VXLAN management service module that can be used to configure and monitor VXLAN tunnels based on multi-protocol BGP, eVPN or Ethernet VPN. In a previous video, we already demonstrated static VXLAN management with such module. Please note also that you may use IMC in monitoring only mode in case of VXLAN tunnels created through OVSDB, like with Nuage or with VMware NSX solutions. The objective of this video is to focus on a practical example and less on eVPN theory as a lot of documentation is available on the internet. Before getting into the live demonstration part, let's review the proposed lab topology, some theory aspects and test objectives. Our lab architecture is the following. This is a layer 3 IP fabric with two leaf switches and one spine switch. These are HPE 5940 switches. In most of the case, the spine is not aware of any layer 2 domain and no VXLAN tunnel is terminated on this unit. However, due to limited number of equipment in this lab, spine 1 is also used as a border, a border gateway. Leafs and spine are VXLAN tunnel endpoint or VTEP. In addition, a core switch for intranet internet traffic is connected to spine 1. Two tenants are configured with one virtual machine per tenant on leaf 1 and leaf 2. One bare metal server is belonging to tenant 1 is connected to leaf 2 through a regular layer 2 top of rack access switch. That bare metal server is in a different subnet than other virtual machines of tenant 1. Our target is to get communication between all virtual machines and servers in a given tenant and between tenant according to routes leakage defined on the border VTEP. VXLAN tunnels will be automatically created as part of the IETF draft for data plane called Network Virtualization Overlay Solution using eVPN. Here is a summary view of the multi-tenancy aspect with tenant name, VSI name, VRF name, VXLAN network identifier, layer 3 VSI interface, VLAN tag ID used for layer 2 encapsulation, and VTEP access port. Tenant 1 in, is split into tenant 1A and tenant 1B on leaf 2 to address different subnets. As mentioned earlier, Spine 1 is not aware of a given customer VRF. Instead, all VRF are imported into a global VRF instance. Internet routes will be imported into. In the demonstration, we will verify the following traffic flows. VM1 to VM3 within same subnet. Server 5 to VM1 or VM3 within same tenant but different subnets. VM2 to VM4 within tenant 2. VM1 to VM2, which is intertenant traffic. And finally, VM1 to internet. This is the detailed and busy view <laughs> of the previous information that includes the VMware server details. OSPF is configured so that the VTEP source and destination IP addresses are reachable. Here we use loopback 0. In order to save IP space and ease the fabric provisioning, we use IP address and number interfaces. Any control plane traffic is sourced from loopback IP address. Internal BGP is used, but you may prefer the external BGP implementation as well. Consequently, spine 1 
acts as a BGP route reflector on top of being a border gateway. VEXLAN tunnels will be automatically set up as traffic is started between VMs. So you will see a tunnel between LEAF1 and LEAF2, but as well between LEAF1 and SPINE1 and between LEAF2 and SPINE1 for inter-VRF traffic. Let's have a look now on L2 and L3 VNI logical view. Layer 2 VNI domains are the layer 2 segments in which virtual machines of same subnet will communicate. We have here 10,010, 10,020, 10,011. 10,010 and 10,011 belong to same tenant. Layer 3 VNI provides the Layer 3 routing segmentation between VRF instances and capability of inter-VXLAN routing. Green is for tenant 1, that's VNI 50001. Purple is for tenant 2, that's VNI 50002. Black is for inter-VRF routing or internet access. That's 51,000. Consequently, VNI 10,010 is used for traffic between VM1 and VM3, as this is the same tenant, same subnet. VNI 50,001 is used for traffic between VM1 and VM5, as this is same tenant but different subnet, meaning inter VXLAN routing within same tenant. VNI 51000 is used between Virtual Machine 1 and Virtual Machine 2, as this is different tenant. Let's have a detailed look on unicast packet forwarding from Virtual Machine 1 to Virtual Machine 3. This destination IP address and MAC address is associated with tenant 1 in same subnet than source IP, so within same VSI ID, encapsulated with VNI 10010. Outer source and destination IP address are known thanks to BGP next stop information. Please note route details here where you recognize VNI value as the MPLS label 1. Tunnel destination IP is LEAF2 and on LEAF1 destination MAC is SPINE1 as traffic must cross spine 1 as IP transport node of VXLAN tunnel between LEAF 1 and LEAF 2. Packet is routed in the underlay by SPY 1, reaching LEAF 2 where disencapsulation within VNI 10010 occurs. Finally, packet is forwarded to Virtual Machine 3. On the next slide, the destination packet is within same tenant but has to be routed as the destination via virtual machine or server is not on same subnet. Symmetric IRB or integrated routing and bridging is used, meaning that all VTEPs are capable of layer 2 VNI and layer 3 VNI lookup. This assumes that the ASIC of the switch can perform such recursive packet processing. This is the case for 5940 model. Such symmetric IRB ensures scalability as all VNI do not have to be configured on every VTEP. LEAF1 VTEP perform layer 3 lookup on encapsulated traffic into VNI 50001 which is VNI used for tenant 1 inter-VXLAN routing. 
When packet reach leaf 2, VTEP performs first a layer 3 lookup, then a layer 2 lookup inside the associated vir virtual service instance. This second lookup is triggered by the fact that the inner destination mark of receive packet at leaf 2 is leaf 2 router itself. Outer MAC information provided by the extended BGP community of the EVPN root type 2 information that you see here, top right of the screen. This concludes this first video as the introduction of the lab architecture and in the next video we will see how IMC can help in configuring all of this. Thank you.